They looked at me. Usko dev lok me dal dal. I believed they will tell their friends <laughs> and they will all come. Then at 3.30 in the morning, I got up and went out. Then I saw Dave Lok. I must tell you my experience of landing in Dave Lok. <laughs> this was uh, probably maybe eighty-five, eighty-six, nineteen eighty-five or eighty-six, I'm not sure, one of those two years. So I go to Himalayas and I'm alone, I track, I… I just have… I don't have any woolen clothing because I live in South India. And I just have t-shirts, little thicker ones and I have one canvas jacket. Canvas jackets do well in South because it rains. So I'm always in the canvas jacket because I'm riding on my motorcycle. If it rains, I never had the… I never allowed bad weather to stop me from doing what I'm doing, whatever it may be. Whether I'm playing a game or I'm riding or traveling, I never allowed bad weather to interfere with what I'm doing. So even if it's pouring monsoon rains, I'll be just riding. So always there's a canvas jacket with me. People from Bangalore should know, flying machine jackets. <laughs> but when you go to Himalayas, when it gets cold, the canvas gets colder than normal clothing. <laughs> Actually cotton clothing would be better, canvas gets so cold. So there's no way I can wear this jacket for the first time I realize canvas jacket doesn't work in altitudes. <laughs> All over South India it did well for me. The highest altitude I reached is Uti and Kodaikanal, so it protected me pretty well, but I went there and I couldn't wear this canvas jacket, so I had to take it off and just walk around in t-shirts when temperatures are like minus three, minus four degrees centigrade. Then those days there were Buk Hartal buses. <laughs> These buses are called Buk Hartal. <laughs> Buk Hartal means hunger strike. Morning 3.30 a.m. it will leave Haridwar. One of those small ch short chassis junk Tata buses. The roads were not like how it is today. The Himalayan roads were fabulous. In my experience they were fabulous because almost every corner the bus looked like almost it's going to fall off. And I always went and sat on the top. Almost every year, from Haridwar to wherever I went, Gomok, Kedar, Badri, I traveled on top of the bus. And I know every bend in the Himalayan road. About five years ago when I was driving, people who were driving with me were terrified. Because I was hitting like 130, 140 on the Himalayan tracks. Because I know every bend, I know every rock, every corner. It's like a video in my mind. If I just turn it on, it's like I'm seeing the road two bends ahead all the time. Those moments of sitting there on top of the bus and drinking in the Himalayas, even today I have a perfectly unedited video of the road of complete twelve, fourteen hours drive. Now the Terry Dam has changed, I'm gotten a little confused near that place because the dam diverted the route. Otherwise the video, if I turn it on, it just plays on for me even today. So I sit on the bus and I reach there. That day the bus broke down halfway and there was some little bit of uh, avala, you know, landslides. We reached late at Badri. We had to cross the gate at six o'clock or six thirty but we didn't make it and then the driver somehow begged the gate and opened and we reached there around eight thirty in the evening. It was raining a little bit, cold. I can't wear my canvas jacket, so I'm in my t-shirt, all my muscles stiff, but I'm young. There's no substitute for that <laughs> So I went around and I'm trying to find myself an accommodation. I'm a super budget traveler. Normally, 
wherever else I went, in New Delhi, I always slept in the bus station. ISBT, I've slept in that station any number of nights. In Haridwar, I slept in the bus station. In Rishikesh, I always slept in the bank of Ganga. It's only further up when it gets cold. In Uttar Kashi, I always slept outside. Only when I went further up into the cold, I need a place. <laughs> then I am looking for one cheap accommodation somewhere to put my head down, I'm exhausted. I got some food to eat. That's one thing in North India, you get roti and alu alu, alu alu, alu alu, alu alu. Four, <laughs> four different varieties. <laughs> In twenty, twenty-five days of journey, only the potato is hanging in your hand. <laughs> Being from South India, you are desperately hoping somewhere there will be some little rice and rasam that you can slurp down, which feels like food <laughs> So, I ate the alu-alu. After the alu treatment, I'm looking for a place, no place. They said every hotel is full. They, they were not this many, they were just one or two. So they were all full. Then I went into an ashram. I forget the name of the ashram anyway. I went in and I said, I want to see Swamiji, whoever is there. After much haggling, they took me inside. I had eyes that they could not ignore. No, my eyes are like overworked and not the same. I had no beard, but I had eyes that they cannot ignore. So they took me in. Then I went there, two really nice big swamis, full orange robe, big bearded, they were like, mm. I went and uh, I said, uh, I have come from south and I don't have a place to lie down and I'm all wet, my t-shirt is wet, I don't have a change because all my clothes in my haversack are wet by now. So I need a place to lie down. They looked at me, what do you do this, that? I said, I'm beginning to teach what I know. Mm. Usko dev lok me dal dal. And I thought, oh wow. This is my fortune. <laughs> They're going to put me in Dev Lok. <laughs> Dev Lok me dal dal. All the stories that you've heard about Dev Lok. I went. They took me inside a building like this, like this, alley after alley. Then they gave me a room. The whole… the whole room was laid with beds, nobody there. So I went and I said, thank you and uh, I put my bag down, I just want to hit the sack. I hit the sack, so much water in the beds, <laughs> just it all came. I… oh my god, okay, this bed is wet, I slept on that bed, that is also wet, this bed, this is also wet. But in spite of so much water, it did not drown the bugs. <laughs> when I lie down, they bite me here, they bite me there. And I rolled and rolled and rolled, there were about eight beds, I think. I rolled across eight beds throughout the night <laughs> just to make sure all the bugs are evenly fed. I could have at least stayed in one bed. Once they're satisfied, maybe they would have also slept. <laughs> but I believed they will tell their friends and they will all come. I just wanted to confuse them a bit, <laughs> lying here, lying there, lying there. Then I couldn't sleep beyond 3.30 in the morning. The treatment of the bugs and cold be you know, watery beds. Not cold, wet, not damp, totally like if you lie on it, your s clothes will soak up, including your underwear, everything is wet in that cold. So,
So then at 3.30 in the morning, I got up and went out, then I saw Devlok. I was like no sleep and I thought I'd just get myself a tea and carelessly a little bit walking like this. Then I just looked up, the whole valley is pitch dark, just the mountain peak was white and golden, lit by the sun from elsewhere. I burst into tears, then I knew I was in their lok. <laughs> no, it's our lok which is so beautiful that you don't have to go to Devlok. <laughs> so that's my experience of Devlok.